afternoon and welcome to The Rundown. I'm your host, Captivating Christian, and here are some of your top stories for today, the 26th of October. Afghanistan claims to have killed Al-Qaeda leader wanted by the FBI. Mike Pence, closest staffers, are testing positive for COVID-19, but the vice president has no plans to quarantine. Florida company warns employees they might lose their jobs if Trump doesn't win. And a Boogaloo Boy leader just got arrested for allegedly firing an AK-47 style rifle during a George Floyd protest. Federal prosecutors say he shot into a Minneapolis police precinct while protesters were inside. And police dragged handcuffed black teen over concrete gets paid suspension. Let's get to the news. Afghanistan claimed it killed a top al-Qaeda propagandist on an FBI's most wanted list during an operation in the country's east, showing that the militant group's continued presence there as U.S. forces work to withdraw from America's longest-running war amidst continued bloodshed. The reported death of Hassam Adilaruf follows weeks of violence, including a suicide bombing by the Islamic State group Saturday at an education center near Kabul that killed 24 people. Meanwhile, the Afghan government continues to fight Taliban militants even as peace talks in Qatar between the two sides take place for the first time. The violence in Larus reported killing threatens the face-to-face peace talks and risks plummeting the nation beset by decades of wars into future instabilities. They also complicate America's efforts to withdraw the 19 years after it led an invasion targeting the Taliban for hosting the al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden after the September 11th attack. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome. Nice to see you and good afternoon. Welcome once again to The Rundown. I am your host, Captivating Christian, and here I like to just give my personal views on the articles for this afternoon. So first, let's get through some house business. Of course, to all new subscribers and watchers of the channel, welcome, welcome. Hopefully you like what you see, share, uh, send it out to people, family members, whomever. You can have debates about it or come back here and watch the other segments that I have here on Cap Hill. And to my state reps that are you in the chat, welcome, welcome, welcome. Always a pleasure to see you. So let's get started and have some fun. So of course, our first article of this afternoon deals with Afghanistan, international news, with Afghanistan claiming that it has killed an Al-Qaeda leader that was wanted by the FBI. Now, uh, Hussan Abdul-Arif happened to be um, one of the top Al-Qaeda people that the government has been looking for, the FBI. Uh, He's been on the FBI watch list since uh, 9-11, after 9-11. So um, definitely a top player that uh, the FBI has been looking for has reportedly been killed. Now, there is no... um, true confirmation as of yet that he has uh, been killed as far as uh, an identification of a body Uh, but they have just been reporting that he's possibly been killed in um, an attack now meanwhile um, other than that of course this uh, basically kind of throws a monkey wrench a little bit into Uh, peace talks. Uh, In Afghanistan, they've been trying to uh, get the government together to uh, do peace talks as the U.S. military forces are leaving or set to leave. 
allegedly. Um, they always say that, but then they always leave a group, a small group of U.S. military in the region. So will they ever fully leave? Will uh, American troops be allowed to completely uh, leave Afghanistan? Don't know. But I'm sure there are many Americans who just want to come home and would rather uh, leave the region safely. But um, this, uh, we shall see, you know, what this does uh, with the election so close, uh, days away, with early voting in Maryland starting today, uh, and of course started across the country in many other states already. Um, we shall see what this uh, will mean moving forward. Uh, as of right now, I mean, I... I I, I guess it would be a great thing. That's one less person on the FBI list uh, for them to be worried about as far as terrorism is concerned. But at the same time, does that open up the door for uh, uh, someone else to take his uh, place? So, again, we'll see what this brings uh, with the onslaught of this election. So stay tuned. About five members of Vice President Mike Pence's inner team now have coronavirus, a troubling outbreak that nonetheless seems not to have stopped Pence's plans to travel across the country campaigning in the coming days. The first case reported this weekend was that of the Vice President's Chief of Staff, Mark Short, who's a spokesperson for Pence revealing on Saturday had tested positive for the COVID-19, according to the New York Times. Despite acknowledging that Pence is a close contact with Short, the VP's office said Pence will continue his activities as usual, i.e. not quarantining, because he is an essential personnel. By Sunday, numerous outlets were already reporting a growing number of positive cases among Pence's aides, with the New York Times saying that at least four of them now have the virus, including the advisor, and the CNN then said that the latest was five staffers. Despite the announcement that Pence himself has tested negative, there is no telling how many cases may still be lurking in his circle or how many more people will be exposed to COVID-19 when he spends the next week holding campaign rallies. The White House itself seems to have openly given up on even pretending to care about doing curving the spread of the coronavirus, which has killed over 224,000 Americans so far. Particular next article, I mean, of course, I believe that I only give this special award out to uh, this person and their family, but being that he's a part of the administration and his latest actions, I think he might deserve to get it too. So here we go. Uh oh, retard alert! Uh oh, retard alert! So it seems that Vice President Mike Pence, um, five members of his close inner circle, like his press secretary and people around him, have tested positive for the uh, COVID 19, otherwise known as AKA coronavirus. Right. Um, yeah, so it looks like Mike Pence, his members of his cabinet, uh, close people around him, have gotten bit by the coronavirus. Oh, hell no! And of course, as uh, reports come out that he has still tested negative. Which, of course, who believes that? But, of course, he, you know, his, his president or his boss is someone who lies all the time. So, I guess he doesn't. I don't give a fuck. He's going to continue 
to uh, campaign and not quarantine. Now, the vice president's uh, schedule is pretty tight. Uh, I believe he has to be down in South Carolina to help old lady G, you know, our famous uh, girl of the evening, Madame uh, <laughs> uh, Graham, get out of her deep hole because... Okay. Uh, not only that, but uh, he's definitely in a tight race between uh, Jamie Harrison kind of losing money and pretty much uh, losing the race. The race is tight. I mean, tight, tight. I mean, tighter than probably Lindsey Graham's booty hole. It's tight. <laughs> um, so, you know, Lindsey Graham is facing that. He has asked Mike Spence attention and his star power to come down to South Carolina. Of course, President Trump can't go down there because he's too busy fighting off his own demons uh, trying to win re-election. So it does not look so good for Lady G. However, Mike Pence is uh, running around the country trying to save his own butt to get re-elected so he can continue to be vice president. So upon this pandemic, uh, numbers rising to almost uh, 250, almost half that, about 225 uh, now. That's 225,000 Americans that have died from coronavirus. And as we continue to uptick and uh, the seasons change as we come ushering fall into winter, and as Dr. Fauci, who is the person uh, more astute to these kinds of viruses and uh, plagues that uh, if we didn't get a handle on it by the time winter got here, the numbers would skyrocket as far as deaths are concerned and hospitals who are already dealing with an influx of people will be bombarded with more. So um, with all this facing the nation, uh, Mike Pence chooses to not quarantine in hopes that he does not spread the virus, but continue to campaign. Now, it is unclear if his other five members will also be required to quarantine or if they, or if they will be on the campaign trail with uh, the vice president, then infecting many others, not only other staff members, but uh, crowds and uh, personnel and people who are there to either uh, clean up the building or secure the building, extra security, anything. So this is just another super spreader kind of situation. And the fact that no one is taking it seriously, even to the fact that the White House has now totally disregarded any uh, safety precautions to stop the spread of coronavirus, almost like giving it out like candy and whoever gets it, gets it. And if you don't get it, um, you know, you're a lucky one. I think it's complete and it's irresponsible for people who are supposed to be the head of the free world. And the fact that almost like you're sitting up there telling them, he needs some milk. Like as if that would just do away with the whole damn thing. I think is uh, completely ridiculous. One thing I do believe, as I've always said, that once they figured out who it would harm the most, it was on and pop it. Enemy spotted. And they're just going with it. And whatever happens, happens. And whoever dies from it, unfortunately, they die from it. I mean, it's very unjust, but it's crazy. What? What the fuck? Yeah. So, we shall see what this vice president does. But on to other news. Employees at a Florida manufacturing company got letters along with their pay stubs warning that they might lose their jobs if President Trump isn't reelected. While sending out letters like those are legal, the move was controversial enough to help one employee decide to quit. Daniels Manufacturing President George Daniels, who has donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to pro-Trump committees and other Republican 
causes, defended the letter and said he respects his employees' right to vote their chosen candidates. When it comes to political speech and the workplace, things are complicated thanks to the various Supreme Court decisions like Citizens United. Corporations can spend an unlimited amount of money given to candidates through what are called super PACs as long as they don't coordinate directly with the campaign's candidate. Private companies, as opposed to government employers, who have far stricter rules, can also speak with employees about political candidates or issues or even encourage employees to attend various political events. Because they are private employers, they can also prohibit their employees' First Amendment political expression during work time. All right, so in this next story, a Florida company warns the employees that they might lose their job if the president isn't reelected. Now, mind you, this is a private company, so in private companies, due to the law that the Supreme Court passed with Citizens United, private companies can talk about and spread political propaganda throughout the company, and it is not uh, illegal, but it is very legal, uh, which I think is personally you stupid, because uh, that all that does is help companies uh, strong arm their employees to do something, and you know risk uh, being fired, uh, and you know they can disguise it any way they choose to help. HR not or, or the employees not actually you know hammer down a big lawsuit but unfortunately it is very legal so this particular company who's of course the president has the president of the company rather has donated hundreds of thousands to the Trump uh, pro-Trump campaign as well as Republicans Jesus. Okay, it's basically told his employees that if Donald Trump does not win, he's going, they will lose their jobs uh, with no evidence of anything that um, Joe Biden's plans or anything will cause the company to go belly up. But just because he's that much of a Trump loyalist that he will tell his employees, hey, if you don't vote for Donald Trump, you'll lose your job. Uh, however, one person uh, was not falling for it. <laughs> And that employee has quit. Um, gotcha, bitch. And said, uh, no, you're not going to try and, you know, force me to vote uh, against someone that I choose not to vote for. Um, however, um, the, the president of the company did go out and say that he does not, you know, he hopes that all of his employees vote for the candidate that they choose. Um, however... You say that, but then you also threaten them like, hey, if you don't vote for Trump, you'll lose your job. Uh, so, I mean, which one is it? Make it make sense. So anyway, yeah, I think that was a total, 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 total wrong move. Um, such a Venus. move that I, I really just don't know what to say. And the fact that these private companies can do that is definitely quite... Looney Tunes. Oh, hell no. But, um, yeah, this is the kind of corporate America that we're building that, you know, this along goes with... Execute Order 66. Which, basically, I mean, that, you know, is satire from a, from a movie, but, I mean, really, when you have corporations kind of threatening the employees that, hey, if you don't vote for this person... Um, you have, you know, you could possibly lose your job. And with the scarcity of how jobs are during this pandemic, of course, that would make people second think, uh, even if they were, you know, deciding to vote for Joe Biden, that, hey, they don't want to go without a job and, um, you know, risk causing harm to their families. So the way you just whip that around is ridiculous. And, uh, yeah, I think... The Supreme Court should 
re-look into uh, the Citizens United um, thing, which allows corporations or anybody to pour money into campaigns as long as you're not like, you know, directly dealing with the candidate. I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous because, again, it allows companies to do and such asinine practices such as this. So that's crazy. A leader in the insurgent Boogaloo movement is facing charges for firing 13 rounds of his AK-47 style rifle into a Minneapolis police building during the riot that swept across the city in the wake of George Floyd's death. Police arrested 26-year-old Ivan Harrison Hunter of Texas on Thursday for allegedly opening fire on a Minneapolis Police Department's 3rd Precinct building on on May 28th after it had been stormed and set on fire by protesters. According to federal prosecutors, people were still in the building when Hunter started shooting at it. He claimed to be the leader of the South Texas Boogaloo Boys, part of a national network of anti-government extremists who fantasize about a violent uprising or civil war. Hunter is facing a rioting charge, which carries fines, imprisonment up to five years or both. Feds are monitoring Hunter's social media when he returned to Texas from Minneapolis. They also noted that he was in communication with Michael Solomon, a Minneapolis resident and Boogaloo boy who was recently hit with federal charges for attempting to sell weapons along with fellow Boogaloo boy Ryan Tweeter of North Carolina. On June 3rd, Hunter was in Austin, allegedly leaving a protest over George Floyd's death in a pickup truck with two other men when police pulled him over for driving infractions. Police found six loaded magazines for a AK-47 tactical vest which Hunter was wearing, and an AK-47 style rifle, three additional semi-automatic rifles in the back seat, and two loaded pistols elsewhere in the vehicle. During that infraction with police, Hunter volunteered that he was the leader of the Boogaloo Boys of South Texas, but denied owning any of the weapons, according to prosecutors. The weapons were confiscated along with the ammunition and weed that was also in the car. Hunter and the two men in the car were released from the scene. A few days after that traffic stop, federal agents learned that Hunter had been in communication with Stephen Carrillo, an Air Force Staff Sergeant who is facing charges for deadly ambush attack on federal security officers during a protest in Oakland, California on May 29th. Carrillo was arrested a few days after that traffic stop and during the arrest he shot and killed a sheriff deputy. The Boogaloo Boys are relatively new, the means which signify a second civil war transformed into a full-blown movement this year, which heavily armed a herent who began showing up to protest wearing Hawaiian t-shirts. Despite the movement's short existence, its supporters have already been tied to a number of violent plots and actions. Okay, and in this particular story with these um, so-called Boogaloo Boys... Oh, hey! So apparently these are is a group of white, I call it somewhat white supremacists. They carry uh, uh, AK-47s and other assault rifles, pistols and all these kind of things. Basically wanting a civil war 
um, some kind of race war, civil war. Uh, they try to disguise it between Republicans and Democrats, but really they're anti-government, period. And they will do anything to kind of overthrow uh, the government, almost like that don't tread on us type of mentality. Now, through all of this, I it screams white supremacy, white power, all that garbage, right? All that pure, pure white, pure white, pure white, pure whiteness, pure white trash, trash right? That's what I was looking for. Uh, right words, pure white trash. So um, moving past that, what caught my eye the most about this particular article, and if you hear it closely, or if you heard it closely, then we're all on the same page, that this car was pulled over, had tons of weapons, tons of ammunition, pistols, all kinds of stuff, weed in the car, and these white men were able to, one, everybody said that the rifles and the guns and the ammunition wasn't theirs, that's one. Two, they had weed in the car, and everybody was able to walk away from the scene. That's right. Stop it. Get some help. I said it. They were able to walk away from the scene. Boy. That scene. Nobody was arrested. Nobody was handcuffed. Nobody was charged with having drugs. Nobody was charged with having an unlicensed gun or having tons of ammunition. None of the stuff that if it was somebody of color, they would have been stopped, arrested, probably even killed. None of that happened. The only thing that happened, well, these people were able to literally walk away, probably call an Uber to go home. But they were able to walk away. The only thing that was confiscated was the guns and allegedly the car. But... Who knows if the car was even confiscated. They probably just took the, ammo, took the ammo and the weed and told them, okay, you guys have a great day and please don't break the law no more. Jesus what kind of mess? Like, this wow. is the racism and the racist activities of other police officers that we're having the problem with. I mean, I, I really don't get it. Like, this is it. That's it right there. Damn! That these men were able to have all this ammunition, all these guns, all this, and nothing happened. No arrests. Nobody got shot in front of their kids because they, they hurt. he said he had a gun, like Castile situation. None of that happened. These men were able to still be alive and all that. And you still want to clarify why people of color have more incidences where they wind up dying than others, than white folks? Clear as day. They don't kill who they consider to be their equal or who they see when they look back at themselves. They see themselves, so they won't kill themselves. Uh, but they don't see us that way. And so it couldn't be more clear than this whole article right here. So, yeah, when we talk about defunding the police, that's exactly what people mean. Defunding the whole system. Oh, hell no! And rebuilding it. Thanks. Case closed. <laughs> Hey, this is Captain Raiden Christian here to remind you to tune in to Politics and Wellness every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Politics and Wellness every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. And be sure to join Jay Wilson, Rebel Sun, the official King Payne, Conscious TV, and Captivating Christian 
this and every Thursday at 6.45 Central Standard Time, 7.45 Eastern Standard Time for the Gentleman's Panel. Well, we are not afraid to go there and discuss an array of topics. See you there. A police officer has been suspended for dragging an underage black teenager across the pavement, despite the fact that the teen was not resisting. The incident went down in the Mansfield, Ohio area earlier this month when Officer Jordan Moore stopped a car driven by the teen's dad. It is unclear why the cops stopped the car. The video begins with both father and son on the ground surrounded by police. last story um again most disheartening thing to see definitely i'm sure is to be a father and to be helpless that you cannot help your own child he's treated now it's one thing as a father for the police to treat you one way and you kind of feel like you can handle it but then to see your son get dragged like some kind of rag doll by another officer by his neck of by the hoodie of his uh, the neck collar of his hoodie um is ridiculous oh hell no um you know and i'm guessing it hurt the father more to see that than for him to know that his son was watching him be slammed up against a patrol car and again um this type of attitude is the same kind of attitude that this current president um, praises and he oh, always no. tells for officers to rough them up and do this and do that to them and this is the kind of behavior that these officers you know exude now again when we sit here talking about some oh uh, about blue lives matter they can't really matter when they act like this to uh, regular civilians who are not resisting arrest and yet get treated like animals so then we're trying to figure out well who's the animal here because it sure couldn't be the people in handcuffs that aren't attacking you it might just be the handlers might be the true animals because that's what it looked like in that video it looked like white animal crackers gone wild 
I mean, the more you know, the more you grow, people. I, I just don't know what else to say. It's Jurassic White Park. Full of Terrarosaurus crackers. And all kinds of other wild, exotic, white animals. But on a serious note, I hope that family sues the hell out of um, that police department. Uh, not to mention that that police officer that dragged that teenager by the hoodie of his uh, by the hoodie of his sweatshirt. Um, he was suspended, but suspended with pay, and that's the crazy part. How about you suspend the person, do the investigation, and then decide whether or not you they deserve to get paid. How about you just suspend them without pay, pending investigation. Then if you can prove that the officer conducted himself correctly and in the way of the officer was supposed to, then you will grant payment and pay whatever back pay is necessary. But how about you hold off in trying to allow that officer to get some money so they can uh, build up their own defense or having to call the union to say, hey, here's my union dues and my legal fees. Get me a good lawyer. Uh, how about you hold off on that? Because that's what you should have done in this case. Shouldn't have suspended him with a goddamn thing. Should have just suspended him a pending investigation as far as whether or not he was going to get paid and just let him figure out how the hell he was going to feed his own family. You ever think about that? Because that might be a way to stop a lot of this BS too, you think? Because I'm sure that father was pretty pissed. Bitch, I hope the fuck you do. You'll be a dead son of a bitch, I tell you that. So I'm hoping that uh, this family does really sue because uh, that's just ridiculous. Just pure trash. Just pure trash. And, um, you know, no one has, no one should, uh, see that and no no parent should actually have to stand there helpless and watch their son get treated or daughter for that matter get treated like that um but this is the kind of atmosphere that this president brings and i think by time it's enough it's enough of this whole we're so sorry we're sad um no this is not what it looks like you know these police officers were just doing their job no. Oh, hell no. Enough's enough. And it's time to just move on. Like it's time to do something else. When the system doesn't work, it is time to dismantle it and rebuild it. That's it. It's just that simple. It's nothing wrong with that. The problem is that they like the money that it brings um, and the power that it brings. And they don't. Once again, thank you for watching CCN Midday News. Hope you enjoyed. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that notification button so you will never miss another news update. Have a great day. Peace.